Here is the sun, and here is the earth. The sun emits energy at a huge rate, almost 4 times 10 to the 26 joules every second. This energy takes the form of electromagnetic radiation. Specifically, it's mostly visible light. The energy spreads out in all directions like a sphere, and by the time it reaches the Earth, it has been spread over a giant area. But why is it 10 to the 26 and not 10 to the 27? What dictates the energy? The answer is the Stefan-Boltzmann law. In this formula, what area do we use? Is it the area of the Sun or the area of the solar energy sphere? The answer is it's the area of the Sun because the Sun is the object emitting this power, so we use its surface area. So the emissivity we'll use 1 because we'll assume it's a black body. We put in the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, and the area of the Sun is just the area of a sphere, 4 pi times the Sun's radius squared. T here is the surface temperature of the Sun. When we calculate, we get a value of exactly what we wrote before. When this energy, this power, reaches the Earth, it is much less intense because it has spread out to a giant area. So the intensity has dropped, and we could calculate it. We take the power, and we divide by the new area that the energy is spread across. Because this energy sphere is exactly that, a sphere, the area is 4 pi times the radius squared. And we're using here the radius of the giant energy sphere. This value, the solar intensity that reaches our planet, is called the solar constant, and it's in our data booklet. But the value we acquired is a little bit too high for various reasons. The true uh, value listed is 1,360 watts per meter squared. To recap, we have the sun, and way outside of it is this solar energy sphere. For every square meter on this sphere, there's 1,397 watts of power being carried forward. But the Earth is a tiny little speck out here. So how much energy or power do we receive? Here's the Earth, and here's the solar energy sphere about to strike it. As the ener energy sphere proceeds forward, you can see that the amount the Earth receives is just a two-dimensional disk whose area is pi r squared, where r is the radius of Earth. So we receive a two-dimensional disk, a little cutout, and we can show that 2D disk over here on our diagram. This might sound odd to you, because after all, the Earth is not two-dimensional. The Earth is a sphere with area 4 pi r squared. So it's as though we're taking this pi r squared of energy and wrapping it around the entire 4 pi r squared of the Earth. Remember that intensity is power divided by area squared. So the power contained in that two-dimensional disk is being stretched out across four times the area. And so the value here, 1397 watts for every square meter, that uh, value for every square meter actually has to be spread out across four times the area. So to find the true intensity, for every square meter on the spherical Earth, we divide this number by 4 to arrive at around 349 watts per square meter of the entire planet. Now we know it's actually less than this. This is how much strikes our planet, but our planet has an atmosphere. And when energy strikes, some of it is reflected and only some is transmitted. We know that the albedo, on average, of the Earth is 0.3. And so how much is transmitted, finally, to the real surface of Earth? It's 0.7 of the original amount, which comes to about 244 watts per meter squared.